as we start a highly anticipated open-ended road trip, we're excited for the new sights and landscapes. To take on new adventures. Getting my seatbelt out because I'm about to ride inside the bus for the first time ever. Meet the locals and make new friends. Get a feel for regional flavors. with a goal of seeking out what makes each stop unique. It's the Cardboard Boat Museum. Last week you saw us leaving the parking pad we've been parked in for three years. But actually... Have you explained to them what happened? Why don't we do that now, since I don't know how well I explained it, because I was panicking. Well, the shakedown trip is going very shaky. We got turned around in the driveway and realized that I never installed a air hose, an overflow hose for the waste tank. So now we got some wastewater <laughs> just running out of the luggage bay there. So I'm gonna put a hose in real quick while we let the bus warm up and then we'll get back on the road. Just a quick little driveway job. We don't want waste water spilling into the tank. I'm glad I saw that water dripping out of the luggage bay. The great adventure began again. <laughs> well, we we had to get you nice and sweaty yeah. on our exit, right? Sure, exactly. <laughs> I drove ahead in the Jeep to film Don driving the bus out of the driveway and waited and waited. And after about five minutes, I knew something was wrong. The bus was overheating. We're stuck in the driveway. Still haven't left. I don't know, we're still smiling. Now this whole time, looking at the eyeglass, which tells you how much coolant is, since I've owned the bus, I've always thought it was full. But we were able to put about five more gallons in it at that point. Nothing changed in the sight glass, so we thought we were okay. We had a little lunch while we waited for the engine to cool down. We filled it up with coolant and we've turned the engine on and so far so good. Anybody and? ready to go on a trip? Is it good? Everything's looking good. We should be okay to go to the truck stop. We'll get air, gas. I'm gonna run the engine while we're up there and we'll see okay. if it gets too hot, we'll stop and let it cool down. Worst okay. case scenario, we'll just come back here. Yeah. And we were ready to try to actually make it out the driveway. Insert video. I heard him coming. And then I didn't hear him coming. I was like running down the hill. No, 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 what now? It was a little muddy from all the rain and there was some slipping and sliding. Luckily, I didn't get stuck in the mud. I was just sliding off the gravel. I was able to reverse, give a little push, and make it up the hill. And then we made it about one mile. The bus overheated and the engine shut off. So we were stuck a little bit in the road for a while no way a fun time. <laughs> we got our safety cones out. We were only a mile away, so I asked my dad to join us in this troubleshooting adventure. We pulled off off the road, so at least we're not in the middle of the road now. i wait for the bus to cool off some more and see if we can troubleshoot some of these coolant issues. I've got a mechanic who's helping us out on the phone. He's, Thank you so much, Joe. So he's kind of talking us through step by step. I'm anxious, but I'm at home. <laughs> you guys having fun yet? Yeah. It's so hot, like, <laughs> just to add to it all. I know we're gonna get a lot of flack in the comments about this. Yeah, but please be kind. We had a terrible day and we thought that the sensor was broken. Yeah, all signs 
talking to MCI last year said our sensor were broken. It's on our list of things to try to get fixed in the next month or so. But it turns out the sensor wasn't broken. The coolant level has just been low, below our sight glass, as long as we've had the bus. Apparently it takes 32 gallons, 32 and a half gallons of mm -hmm. coolant. And we put about 13 in today. I'm getting my seatbelt out because I'm about to ride inside the bus for the first time ever. I took the Jeep back to Don's parents' house for now and the cats. So I get to go for a ride. Goodness, we didn't overheat. Oh. It's not the destination we wanted for tonight, but <laughs> this is at least somewhere we can stay for the night. Did you think that our first shakedown night was going to be two miles <laughs> from where we spent and the, the like, last? We've been, it's been like what six hours now that since we left. It's been a really stressful day. I'm glad that it happened close to home because it would have been way worse if we were driving 10 miles away and then it overheated. I think the heat has made it really difficult almost to the point where I was a little bit shaky worrying that I got a little heat stroke. Yeah. <laughs> Part of the reason I've been so stressed today is because I didn't want this one to get anxious. Don's dealing with a lot right now. So the best thing I can do for Don is to remain calm. Even though we were put to the test today, we're seeing all our hard work preparing for this journey paid off. The driveway was a real test to see how well we secured things down. And not a single drawer flew open, no dishes or glasses flew out or broke. This last couple days, I've just kept thinking I need to adjust how I deal with problems. I can't just push it through. We don't have to push ourselves anymore. The whole point of this lifestyle change was to live a healthier life and take better care of ourselves. And so far we haven't done that with the bus bolt and that needs to change now. We're not hurrying to go to the truck stop tonight. No. We're not we're rushing. Chill out. We're, yeah. we're somewhere. We're somewhere. We, made somewhere. we have we our home. Stay. We got everything we need right here. But since our waste tanks were full, Don got creative with his shower for the night. But problem solved, it started raining. And so we just took a shower outside in the rain. How was it? Oh, it felt so good after being so hot today. Yeah. Things are definitely not perfect. I'm gonna sit down, have a little dinner. Each day offers us the opportunity to start fresh. It's okay. Can you fat her on it? It was like the rain washed away our troubles, and we were now ready to move forward with clear heads and hearts. This is the cat's first time traveling in the bus. Don has a big smile on his face today. I'm so glad we took some time to just rest and sleep and made this our only chore for the day. What else is kitty? Is she also knackered? We got some good sleep last night. I think we were both feeling quite a bit better after the successful <laughs> driving and the bus, all of us together. And we sat down and talked a little bit more about getting our mindset straight and keeping the stress level low and trying to enjoy our time. We're moving on. First stop, we gotta dump our tanks. But then we're gonna go somewhere fun. 
Hi, baby. We made it to the dump station. We made it to the dump station. How you doing? Mm, good. situation right now. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a better hose we can use or a better faucet at the end to stick into the tank. I just don't know what that is. It's our first time. Give me a break guys. Never filled it all the way up before. We've just filled it a little bit and used it a little bit more. Let's see how long it takes. I'm going to hit the stopwatch now. Maybe it was a slow pump for the water because uh, this guy over here, he just emptied that entire truck fuel tank into the fuel station while I filled up 135 gallons of water. It's gonna take a while. Did you stop the timer? 42 minutes to almost fill the tank all the way up. So we'll be spending some time at the dump and fill station. That means it's time to go to our camp spot for the night. You ready to go guys? Cats don't like riding in the car with me in their bags. They were much happier riding in the bus. Our next stop was for boondocking at the 450 Brewery and Simmons Winery near Columbus, Indiana. For a nice big bus and they've got some food that Don says smells really good inside so we're definitely gonna go check that out tonight. We need we've done great boondocking like straight away. Oh yeah we're both pretty flexible when it comes to this like when we did that glamping we had a, just a bucket for our sink and not having running water this last couple days was fine because we still had a sink to drain. <laughs> yeah. Now we got filled up with water. Yes, we're, we're gonna, gonna take a shower. shower. <laughs> So my shower felt great, but it didn't drain all the way. Just working out the kinks, right? John ran out to the hardware store, bought a little plunger and plunged the shower and it immediately all went down. I think it just formed like a, a vacuum somehow when we emptied our tanks and pulled them up. Don took a second shower, I got a shower in, it was amazing. And now we're gonna go have dinner. You ready to go? is hopping. Food was good. Drinks were good. Our first harvest host experience working out pretty good. We did a wine tasting while we waited for our table because it was so busy. Ordered way too much food because we were hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so we we're taking quite a bit back to the bus. It was good. It was yeah. a good first harvest host experience. Okay, watch out. Doors opening. 
the place for a walk. Oh, and he's off. He is on a mission. We have some neighbors now. We uh, met them on our way to dinner and turns out they're on their shakedown trip too and experiencing similar stuff. Little things going wrong, things you forget, trying to figure it out. It was pretty funny. As we settled in, even though we didn't know where we'd end up the next day, we felt a sense of calm and slept well that night. We actually slept in until almost eight, which was really nice. Taking the cats out for a little walk here before we get going today. There's flash flooding just south of here. Looks like we're not going to go into it, but we are heading south and east. Got a little drive. It's so hot and so humid and so thunderstormy. We've opted to uh, head to an RV park tonight. We made our way to the RV park at the Rising Star Casino in Rising Sun, Indiana. There's so many of them. <laughs> oh my goodness, so many. Do you think that woman across the road? <laughs> I think we're gonna have to wait this out. We got ourselves set up for the night and we're glad to have electric hookups to keep the heat and humidity to a comfortable level in the bus. The Rising Star Gambling Hall is on a riverboat. In the late 20th century, gambling was illegal on land, so crafty businessmen found a loophole by building the casinos on boats. They have laundry here, so we can get our laundry done. If you've been watching a while, you know that I was most excited about getting the dishwasher and we have been using it in the basement before we were in the bus. So we know the dishwasher works great, but we haven't actually used it in the bus. So we're using it for the first time and I guess it's more about checking for leaks. Do we have it set up right? But I'm excited to do some dishes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It beeped. That means it's ready. There have been no leaks. Looks steamy in there. Looks like we got some clean dishes. The next morning the location fulfilled its promise with a welcoming sunrise. And we were excited to cross our first state line on this trip, heading towards our mechanic and into Ohio. Tonight we're staying at a Boondockers Welcome. You can actually join through Harvest Host. The guy who owns this property, he's actually busy converting a Prevost and he's super excited um, to talk to Don. And we got a schoolie next to us, an RV on the other side. We get electric hookups and because it's with Boondockers Welcome, it's a free spot for the night. And the electric hookups are so welcome because it's still so stinking hot. I am here right now editing videos, but man, it is so good to be able to just run the AC non-stop while I get some work done. While we've been waiting for the mechanic, we've been going for daily walks down into this little town along the river, and we noticed this museum. It's the Cardboard Boat Museum, and it totally piqued our interest. 
Each year, the cardboard boat regatta happens during the town's River Day celebration. The participants have nothing more than cardboard, paint, and tape for the race. We got a chance to ask one of the founders about how this all got started. Probably about 29 years ago, I think some guys that down at Joe's place, when it was Joe's, I think they all said that they could build a better boat than the other guy, and they took cardboard down on the river and started it. And 29 years later, we're here, so it's gotten bigger every year. And I had to know, how do you build a boat out of cardboard? You can use any kind of tape you want. We use a, a white pipe insulation tape. It's paper tape that holds paint real well. Or duct tape's good, drill tape's good. If you want to use your boat one year. Any workshops for people in the area that want to learn how to build them? Or? If people come in, we got a little thing up here that they can look at, a little display, mm -hmm. and then we'll tell them, give them tips and everything on how to do it. Talking to the guys at the museum, you can tell this isn't so much about the boats as it's about community. As the founders of the museum not only host the annual regatta, but also have some of their cardboard boats watercraft certified. Each year, they paddle up to 22 miles down the Ohio River and raise money for disabled veterans. So I have a board here where you can pin where you're visiting from. And I am going to be not the first one from South Africa, but the first one from Port Elizabeth, South Africa. Well, that was really cool. What a fun bunch of guys. What a fun event. I wish we would be here for <laughs> like racing a cardboard boat. <laughs> yeah, we probably would have tried to get in on it. Yeah, in on the action. for sure. We thought we were going to see the mechanic today, but he was still busy and the cats got a day off from driving and I think that was good for them. They were a little stressed out. I think we all just needed a day to chill here. It's been good. In just our first week on the road, we've made a conscious change about our mindset and found a way to be healthier and happier with the situations beyond our control. As outsiders ourselves, we'll be seeking out the unique in the places we visit. Those oddballs and weirdos, just like us, that see the world a little differently. And we're so thrilled to share more of these moments with you. Arriving at the mechanic was the most hair-raising, reversing job. Oh, well, you know what, if we did, if we grabbed a couple zip ties. And while we're under there, we spotted a little bit of a problem. That could have caused a fire. <laughs> 